Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Read Chinese Poetry podcast. I'm Zhong Qicai, the program host. In this podcast program, my colleagues and I aim to introduce cutting-edge scholarship on Chinese poetry to a broad general audience. We will present 52 episodes covering the major poetic genres developed over China's long history. Each episode features close reading of one or more of the best-known Chinese poems, with an aim to illuminate their literary greatness and cultural significance. For all the discussed poems, Chinese texts, English translation, romanization, and brief notes are provided at our website, howtoreadchinesepoetry.com. By following the 52 episodes, listeners will gain a bird's eye view of the thematic, formal, and generic evolution of Chinese poetry from antiquity to the modern era. Instruct and delight is what we wish to accomplish in each talk. Without further ado, let's begin. Hello, everyone. Today, our guest host, Professor Lian, will present his third and the last episode on long song lyrics, entitled Li Qingzhao, Singing Her Autumn Sorrow. Let us welcome Professor Lian. The song must seem an echo to the sense, thus spoke a great poet. To understand what this means, one just needs to read aloud the 14 syllables of doubled dental and labeled dental sounds at the beginning of this song lyric by Li Qingzhao. The two verbs xun and meet are synonyms. So are the two adjectives leng and qing. So are the three other adjectives qi, can, and qi. All these verbs and adjectives are repeated and chained together to form a three-line enjambment of sounds charged with meaning. The repetition of searching and seeking, xun xun mi mi, not only prolongs the action, but also implies its futility. The coldness and loneliness of the leng leng qing qing close in on her. This brings in the endless sorrow of qi qi chan chan qi qi. The 14 syllables in the first three lines summarize the situation the poet finds herself in and set the tone for what follows in the poem. No matter what she does, she cannot escape from sorrow. She tries to repel the autumn wind but she knows her effort is futile. The wine is not strong enough to resist the autumn chill, nor can it help her forget her sorrow. To make the situation even more unbearable, the wild geese pass by. These wild geese were once loyal messengers between the persona and her loved one, but now they only serve to make her painfully realize that no messengers are needed anymore. The reappearance of the flock of birds brings back memories of people and events from her past and brings to her attention the cyclic change of seasons. Her heart breaks. The second stanza continues the motif of the seasonal change. Like the wild geese, the withering chrysanthemums remind the poet once again that this is the time when everything decays. In damaged flowers, she sees herself. She is no longer in her prime and what remains of her will be wasted in solitude. There seems nothing else for her to do but to just sit by the window. In fact, this appears to be what she has been doing all day long. 
with a cup in hand, she sits listlessly there, allowing the scenes of the decaying season outside the window to torture her heart. Her fear and despair express themselves fully in the exclamation in line 15. What am I going to do before it gets dark? She is so afraid of the futility of her searching and seeking that she cannot wait for the night, the darkness to come. But even she herself knows that darkness of the night will not bring her solace. The autumn rain on the wood home leaves has been falling all afternoon and promises to extend into the night. The dripping and dropping of the rain, mimicked by the four onomatopoeic syllables beginning with the d sound, dian, dian, di, di, like that of tears, echoes the sound repetition at the beginning of the song, suggesting that the sorrowful sigh that opens the song does not stop but goes on all the way through to the end. The whole piece can be summed up by one word, sorrow. As we have seen, the poet emphasizes this at the beginning by repeating the idea of sorrow again and again. Now, at the end of the song, she tells us that word, the word sorrow just cannot express what she has tried so hard to say. Suddenly, the poet sounds like Zhuangzi, the language skeptic who explains that words cannot express what he wants to express. The poet, however, has also inherited Zhuangzi's dilemma. She has no other medium but words. Ironically, even when she wishes that her readers would bypass language. Her best hope is that some kind of immediate grasp of her sentiment can be achieved by those readers who are willing to go beyond language and try to experience what her words attempt to convey. Seeing in this light, her unconventional use of sounds at the beginning of this piece can be read as a direct appeal to readers' sensual rather than simply intellectual perception. Let us thank Professor Lian for such a wonderful talk. This talk concludes his topic on long song lyrics. To learn more about this topic from Professor Lian, you may read his chapter on long song lyrics in How to Read Chinese Poetry, a Guided Anthology. Next week, we'll get started on topic 16, Song Poems, San Qu of the Yuan Dynasty. And again, Professor Lian will be our guest host. I hope you enjoy the talk. Let us relax and listen to a reading of the poem in Mandarin. 声声慢寻寻秘密冷冷清清七七惨惨七七乍暖还寒时候最难将息三杯两盏淡酒怎敌他晚来风急雁过也正伤心却是旧时相识满地黄花堆积憔悴损如今有谁堪摘守着窗儿独自怎生的黑如同更兼细雨到黄昏点点滴滴这次地怎一个愁字了得To the tune, one beat followed by another, the long tune. Searching and searching, seeking and seeking, chilly and cold, quiet and desolate, 
sad, sorrowful, miserable. This time of year when it's warm now, soon cold again, I just cannot take care of myself. Two or three cups of bland wine are not enough to resist the rushing evening wind. The wild geese passing by break my heart, and they are none other than my old acquaintances. In piles, chrysanthemums are everywhere, withered and damaged. Now who will pick them? I cling to the window, all alone, what am I going to do before it gets dark? The drizzle on the wutong leaves drips and drops, drops and drips into evening. How can all this be summed up by one word, sorrow? <laughs>